live on Discord as well. Let's pick 720, and we should be pretty, pretty good to go. Okay, so uh, for those that are uh, weren't here last week, my name is James. I am. Uh, I used to do commissions for illustration. Now I go to uh, FCD. It's an art school, and uh, I seem to have grown a little bit more accustomed to teaching people, at least to, to the meager level that I've achieved personally in art, and hopefully uh, in the, over the course of the next uh, hour and a half, uh, this might be more clear to you. Uh, well, you should maybe uh, consider listening to me, but you know, you can always be skeptical, I always encourage it. And all throughout this uh, this whole process, I'm going to be trying to question my own information, and hopefully in doing so, sort of give you some sort of insights into this whole complex myriad of, uh, of painting and drawing. So, if you were here the last week, let me double check my recording before I start wasting time. Okay, it's a good thing that I did because I'm not capturing my screen. Okay, so what's happening today is that we're going to go over spheres. If you hear the last class, we did the basic, most fundamental idea of your cubes, and we went through the entire process from step one to step seven, I think it was, or step eight, and we kind of basically charted a roadmap on consistently getting quality cubes and this is all from my imagination right we're not using any reference for this because ultimately we want to be making things that look like this right because ultimately this class is geared more towards concept style painting which means clarity is one of our biggest uh, biggest tools to convey the information on the things that we're painting something more illustrative is, is perfectly possible using the same methods and maybe i'll if i have some time later today i'll talk about how to bridge these ideas with these ideas because obviously when i put this painting it's by mead schaefer one of my favorite artists next to one of these paintings which is by um who is this benzang yeah it is benzang um these don't look very similar right they don't look like the same style particularly it's for more reasons than just the drawing and we'll get into that maybe a little bit later but for now let's start today with just a simple lesson and a simple lesson today just like it was the last time with the idea of your cubes today we're going to be talking about the oh so dreaded topic of spheres now spheres a little bit more complicated than cubes and why is that let's go ahead and answer that question so when we did our cubes we had a pretty good solid roadmap, but before we do any of this stuff, right? Here's the big question. Why should I care? Because everybody under the sun, every painting tutorial that starts from ground zero, always recommends painting primitives. So what is the point? Where is it leading? So ultimately, you can most likely get really good results for anything from imagination if you're able to break down every single step. Right? Because then it just becomes like following a recipe. Then it's almost like baking a cake. And anybody can do that if you just kind of stick to the rules and be diligent with whatever you're doing with the following of those rules. Right? So if I'm able to chart a roadmap, a very specific, very intricate idea, a step by step basis in order to paint something, you're going to be able to paint it regardless of your experience. And I said this and I touched upon it the last time. Something like this, which is kind of some of my student work you can achieve this really shockingly quickly i'm not talking about years i'm not even talking about six months i give this like a month to get from almost no painting to something like this i think it's totally achievable it just depends on the amount of effort that you're willing to put in and just how scrutinizing you are with each individual excruciating step okay so we broke down the steps for cubes but you see that there aren't as many cubes as you would like to see in nature right cubes is a very man-made manufactured shape so spheres have a little bit more mileage. So most of the time when you do these kind of paintings, you're going to be relying on your spheres, your cylinders, and your cones. So I think spheres being, I think, the hardest of all of them, it's a great place to kind of start because really it's not that hard. It's just following steps. But again, why should I care? It's because when I show you a drawing like this, and I say you can do it, and you say, James, no, it's not possible. You might say, James, that's not even good, which you're probably right. But the idea is that if you take any one of these ideas, right, take this weird kind of claw shape, this joint, this knuckle or whatever you call it, that looks something like this, right? And something like that, I'm sure you'd all agree, it looks like something like that in space, but it's really a shape, right? It's really a 3D shape. So what we're actually looking at is something like that, which is most likely it's occupying some space three-dimensionally, right? That would be the minor axis. So if I am able to equate this simple shape in space to something that I know I'm going to be able to paint it, okay? So what's the whole shindig about the entire journey from drawing to painting? Because the entire point of the, the class that I'm taking right now is I'm going to expect you to already know how to draw something and I'm going to expect you to already have some sort of information about perspective. Now, you don't need to be a master. 
you need to be just somewhat initiated with these topics because we go back to the age-old idea in all sorts of painting which is drawing drawing is two-thirds painting and the reason is is because the drawing is going to give us a crucible in which we can fill in all of this information of painting right so if i want to draw anything if i want to paint anything i need to start with just understanding how that particular thing occupies space and the most easiest way to do that is just by drawing it right but the issue with drawing let's just say i draw something like this generic shape number five i draw something like this and I ask you, what does this look like in space? If I was just to 3D generate this with just the pure power of my mind, what on earth would this even look like, right? And it's hard for you to tell because maybe from this particular angle, this shape looks like this, but we can't say for sure because this could be literally a couple of caverns, like a recess in the middle. And now you say, oh, okay, now I know what's happening. Or it could be something like this, right? I can just do basically do anything that I want. I could say it's something completely like that. And now it's more like a cross section of a pot, right? Or it could be something like this. It could be a completely flat surface. But unless I draw these lines inside, it's very hard for you to tell what's actually going on. And that's the beauty of these lines. So in the previous class, we called these lines cross contour, which is a beautifully wonderful, fun word to say. And all that means is we're drawing a line across the contour. Contour just means surface right surface or, or curve or something like that but let's try and bridge this idea because i use the word cross contour because it's how i was taught right but i think let's let's maybe use an additional word instead of cross contour let's just say plain or plain little information it's not exactly the same thing but i've seen a lot of tutorials because i always am curious how other people teach this and they kind of teach it in a slightly different way they say okay don't think about uh, just think about the planes they don't say contour but they kind of imply they mean it so what do you mean by plane? Let's have a short little explanation on that. A plane is an oriented surface. So the last time I did this, right? And we can just pull the same example up. So we draw a shape like this. I prefer to think in contour, but maybe some of you guys don't. Some of you guys might prefer to think in planes. And planes just mean I'm going to basically take this three-dimensional perfect object. I'm going to start to segment it into different subsurfaces, right? So I would say that maybe this, this thing would have a surface pointing this way. A surface pointing this way, a surface pointing this way, a surface pointing this way, and it kind of gets me the same idea as my my uh, cross contour. So if at all this seems to be more appealing to you, I kind of encourage you to go ahead and use it because for our simple shapes like a cylinder, a cylinder from the front is a circle, right? But it could also just as easily be something like this, and you probably get very achievable results if you just think about it like this and then use your plain old information to carry out the rest. So just a quick little explanation if at all anybody here is familiar with planal versions of painting, it's perfectly all right to, to use it as a substitute to cross contour. It's essentially doing the exact same thing because by bisecting or by simply decimating the surface into a series of planes, by simplifying it, you're simply describing the form of an object and everything can work this way, right? If you keep simplifying something, eventually it's gonna be simple enough for you to figure out where things are pointing. And then it's just a matter of just kind of bridging the gap between individual surfaces. Okay. So I'm going to continue along with the explanation of cross contour. I'm going to use that as my tool, uh, but that's just a quick little uh, disclaimer for people that use plain old information. So we're back here. We draw something and we, in our heads, we say, okay, step number two in this little list is going to be, okay, contour it, cross contour it. Why? Because I need to un understand really clearly in my head what's happening inside this infinite void that is a raw drawing, right? Because you can say a lot with a drawing, you can say a whole bunch, but you can't say everything as far as the uh, the behavior of that particular object is going to be with respect to the light, right? Because if I say, I have two objects over here with no relationship, sorry, it's raining outside, hopefully that's not bothering you too much, um, but you have two objects and they're just in space. I can convince you in drawing that these two objects, one of them is behind the other one using something called a T-line. Right? So I draw object number one and object number two. And you can do a lot with this, right? The same thing goes for internal form lines. If I draw you a rock and I say, hey, that's a rock. And you'll be like, okay, pretty okay, not too bad. What's actually happening inside though, James? I'll be like, okay, I'll show you. I'll do these lines, which is kind of de determining some of the planes. I'm like, okay, fine. I can understand that. What about inside there, James? And I'll be, okay, sure. Maybe this particular one, I can segment it even further, right? Maybe it looks like that. And you'll be, okay, I kind of get it. But it costs, it's like more, the more and more lines I'm basically drawing, 
essentially what I'm doing is I'm just contouring it for your viewing pleasure. You see what's happening there? Because this is somewhat equatable to this, if you're following me so far, right? Because all I'm doing to determine the form is this. You've seen so many people start to draw their anatomy, start to do their figure drawing, and what, what do they do when they draw their arms, right? When they start to paint their arms, every arm kind of gets painted like a sausage, right? Or every arm, if they're doing this in line drawing, they have a tendency to do something like this naturally when you're shading. Why are you doing that? What's the point? Because people aren't stupid, right? They're doing something well-intentioned, well-mannered. The reason is, is because they're trying to tell me through line that this particular form is cylindrical via the contour, right? So we all, all of it goes back to this idea of contouring, right? Contouring is giving us surface information, but we don't want to rely on lines because it so happens that what, what happens if I'm doing the most pristine, beautiful, untouched cylinder known to man? It's just so beautiful. It's just so porcelain. Nothing can stop it. I don't want to be messing this up with a bunch of lines on top because this might indicate something weird to my viewer, right? What is this? Is that a little bit of hair? Is that bits of tape taped onto the side? It's hard to tell. So in order for us to be very clear with our communication, we involve a powerful tool at our disposal, which is just the idea of value. Because the value is not going to break this drawing. It's only going to enhance the information that it provides. And as far as my line of work goes, concept art, that's exactly what I want to get out of it. I want to be able to convey as much as possible. So that's the explanation of contour and why it's important because it's giving you that information. But I can't just use raw contouring in my drawing. That's not going to give me the results that I want. I want to go one step ahead of that. So then after I get my contour, I get this and it's called my shape. And you hear this all the time. Your shapes are important. Get better shapes, design better shapes, use better shapes. What on earth is a shape? A shape is simply a two dimensional object that is defining the response that a three dimensional object experiences in light. A lot to break down there, but it's not really that hard. If I draw a cylinder really quickly, if I draw the contour on the major axis, if I draw the contour on the minor axis. And again, I'm going to go back to your plane idea for any of you plane wizards in here. Basically, what I just did is I drew a bunch of planes, right? These are a bunch of oriented planes. This one, that, that's one plane, that's one plane, that's one plane. And each one of these planes, if you can imagine, and this is why I kind of expect you to know a little bit about perspective, you can imagine in space, this is kind of pointing up. This is pointing a little bit more towards us. This is pointing even more towards us. This is pointing away from us, but towards the floor. This is pointing towards the floor. You kind of see what I'm talking about here? So again, we use the contouring to give us some information. But now this little big guy comes in here, and his name is Shape. So what does he say? He says, all right, listen, real simple, boss man. If you tell me where are my light source is, and if I, and if you know where exactly I point away from my light source, you can shade me in a way that makes sense, that shows the contour, without actually having to draw it. Crazy concept, right? Implied contour through shape. You see, contour through drawing, shape through contour. It's all related. And I'm, that's what I'm talking about. It's a roadmap. It's not one thing and the next thing. It's one thing leading to the next thing. And that's how you'll never lose your way. So we have our shape. So how do I link and marry these two concepts of contour and shape? So it so happens that I will say this particular area right over here, this particular point, that's where this thing turns from being facing the light this way to facing towards us or facing away from the light. Let's just say it's facing away from the light. So that means all I have to do is go from there and join it up to the bottom. And I get a shape that describes this particular cylinder, right? I get this kind of weirdly curved shape. Looks like this now. I get this shape and that shape is just the idea of saying a certain number of contoured uh, of contoured lines inside the drawing of the object are facing away from my light source and that gives me a very specific shape which says okay this is the shape of a cylinder facing away from the light in my drawn condition okay and that's shape really really important because now that i've shown you this and now if i show you this a bunch of alarm bells ring in the back of your head and you say, wait a second, James, you're, you're, you're so simple. What's wrong with you? It's not complicated at all. You say, okay, that's the shape. And you say, okay, that's the shape. And I know why you use the shape now, because you said in the back of your head, I imagine contours like this, and I imagine contours like this. So you just made a shape. So now my question to you, James, is how did you figure out what to put in that shape? 
right? And we went over this last time, but I'll briefly touch over it. So for the purposes of this particular class, I'm going to just use a very simple concept to achieve the value, which is the next major step, and it's called halfway to black. A quick refresher and a quick retry. Uh, supposed to be, yeah. It's not. Uh, hold on, one second, guys. Let me just quickly check because it should be on Twitch. All right. No, the other one. Okay. Hey, so I have some. Yeah, yeah, there's a link in the chat. Also, my, I've got friends in here. One second, let me uh, go ahead and unmute some guys. All right, Lemur, you get unmuted. You're my buddy today. Anybody else in here that I know? Uh, Ray Ray's in there. All right, Ray Ray. You can get a mic privilege. <laughs> hey, no worries. Okay, let's continue with this, right? Also, Lamer, if you could like just just give me a bit of a heads up if somebody asks a question in the chat, that'd be great, buddy. But no compulsion. Okay, so we're at this stage, right? We're at the the twelve yard line here. We say draw, find the contour, find the shape, and then determine the value using halfway to black, which is a very simple idea. If you'd like to read more about halfway to black and all of its corollaries, you're welcome to look at the Scott Robinson book. Again, I explain this in detail in the last class you're welcome to go back and watch the video but the scott robertson book how to render so it's render not draw it goes into detail about how you can use this to your benefit but what's the simplified idea because we're not rocket scientists here we're just artists right it's hard enough but it's not that hard so halfway to black just means if i have a value so yeah, hopefully, hopefully you can see my color selector i can pick any value here and all i gotta do is i gotta tiptoe my way all the way to the darkness and then cut that distance in half. I'm right there. And what do I get at the end of the day? I get a contrasting value. Really, really simple, right? So this is a principle, and just a starting point. It's not gonna solve all of your value problems, uh, if, if only it was that simple. But you know what this is gonna avoid? If you're an artist and you ever show somebody a painting and they say, hey, great work, except I think you can push your lines a little bit more, and I think you can push your shadows a little bit more, because it's not very contrasted. This is a, is a tool you can use to sort of slightly assuage that idea and because all you're doing here is you're ensuring with this halfway to black idea that things will always be contrasted so for the homework that i gave you last time i, I said okay if you choose your light your shadows are almost automatic because if i choose this light i halfway to black it and i get the shadow value which means we go back to this little equation over here if for whatever reason I take my cylinder and I say, all right, I'm going to choose. I'm going to make one decision and one decision only, which is what is the light value? I'm going to say it's this. Then everything is natural to me. I pick this value. I cut it in half. And that is my naturally occurring shadow. Is it the correct shadow? Is it the perfect shadow? I'm not quite sure. I still have to exercise my, uh, my perception as an artist to say whether it's good or not. But I think everybody here will agree that the value that I just applied just through pure algorithm is well contrasted and that's the point the point is is to contrast it so now again i i offer you my humble drawing and i say okay do you know what i did here i picked the value in the light i picked the value in the light, and I say hey wait a second wait a second it's getting a little bit closer maybe my understanding is getting a little bit better maybe james chose to push the core shadow just a little bit more but now i kind of get it i kind of get why there's a distance there because of halfway to black so you see how it's all connected and now I go around the piece and I say, hey, let's pick this value. Let's pick this value. Hey, wait a second. A little bit familiar, huh? A little bit familiar. Same thing over here. It's not complicated. What it is, it's, it's tedious. It's tedious to remember all of these rules. You just wish that art was just super intuitive. And believe me, it is. But once you kind of integrate these rules into your process, if at all you choose to, and you do it enough times, you don't even have to think about this stuff. It's automatic. But just because it's not automatic and just because you're not an expert artist does not preclude you from producing work that's better than this, right? Because again, what am I doing? I'm just a robot following rules. 
not entirely true. I am making decisions, all right? I choose the light. I choose how much bounce light. All these things are, you know, it's, it's my prerogative as the artist. But does that preclude anybody from doing this with those simple decisions? It doesn't. The only thing that's keeping you from doing this is the amount of effort and the amount of rules you choose to follow, right? So again, I keep trying to link it back because it's just the same thing. Okay, so once you're done with the value, you can talk about all the other steps, right? Like bounce light and you can talk about diffuse light. But I think at this point, everything makes enough sense for us to go towards the sphere. So a quick little crash down on why you should care about primitives, because you see where we started, right? We started with the simple idea of a cylinder and we said, draw it, contour it, shape it, value it. And we're almost 90% of the way to doing something like this, right? Assuming we have good information about drawing and good information about perspective, right? So pretty cool. We're in a good standing right now. So let's go back. Oh, my bad. I need to, I need to hit tab. You're right. Okay. Need to uh, remember not to do that. All right. So we're here. I'm going to save this page in case we need to refer back to it later. So let's start with the idea. So now that I understand, now that I understand that spheres are important, let's go ahead and start with spheres. Very simple. Just a little bit of a disclaimer. One thing that I'm not going to explain, which I did the last time for cubes, is casting the shadow. I'm not going to be explaining this because it's a little bit, it requires a little bit more perspective information and I kind of want to save my time today. If we still do, hold on. Yeah, it should be fine now. There you go. Oh, let me do that. Put that there and we can put that here that should be all good now it'll it'll update in a second i'm gonna quickly peruse the chat see if everybody's with me so far and we should be all right okay seems like it's okay sorry about the issues guys i should uh, really be better at controlling that is a mac issue more than it is a streaming issue okay so we're on spheres now so spheres on 101 now i will offer you a step-by-step -step completely thorough information about how to render a sphere step number one is draw the sphere now you can do this if you'd like to right but me being the horrendously devious cheater that i am i'm just going to use a selection tool for this so i'm just going to grab the selection right because i don't want to be the guy that spends 15 minutes trying to draw the perfect sphere for you for every circle so let's just start and let's just assume we're going to be using this idea then the next step over here let me just go ahead and grab some space because again, this is not a drawing class, it's a painting class. So step number one, do the drawing. The most important thing, if you have a wonky looking drawing, the entire painting is going to go awry. Because remember, when I offer you steps over here, these steps are going to be in progressive amounts of uh, importance in, an, in a reverse way. So it's the first step is the most important, and then it starts gradually becoming less and less important. Still important, don't get me wrong, but whatever's up here if you don't get those right everything else subsequent to it sort of fails and falters okay so it's really really important that we kind of take care of this which is why i'm not taking any any second chances with this right i'm not gonna i'm gonna I'm not gonna try and uh, risk getting a poor drawing because i know just how much it's going to impact my painting so drawing is the first first step the second step remember contouring right you need to be able to contour the sphere so you can do this if you'd like to immediately and I'll this is how I'm going to start explaining this I'm going to imagine a particular perspective for the center of my sphere right over there and this is what you need to start thinking about in your head right because this is going to get really really important very quickly it's that as things going to get away from us we still want to be ensuring that we have a good command over how these things are curved right we want to always think about things curving around the sphere not just on that axis right but on every axis we should be able to comfortably draw these contour lines across the entire surface now the perspective is going to really determine how these are curving in space i'm not going to be too much of a sticker on this right now because it's a lot to explain and this is not a perspective class but just be kind of aware that whenever you draw a line over a sphere this particular line must follow the general idea of a curve right it curves here so if i was going to do this properly if this was the perspective over here that means every line below this line curves a bit more curves a bit more like that, curves a little bit more like that, and every line above this line is going to curve a little bit more like that, curve a little bit more like that, and that's how you can get a good contour. So why do you care about this? Because again, always ask why do we care? 
The reason is because when I start to radiate this, which is the big, big step in painting, remember? I showed you just now all the way up to getting the shadow shape, which is pretty simple for a sphere. But gradation is the key to all rendering, to make things look realistic, because light in reality gradiates. It, it goes step by step into a lighter or lower value. It never just goes shrieking into a high contrast transition, except for very particular conditions. So always think about gradiating. This was a big theme in my last lesson. Gradiate everything if you can. So I have a rough idea of how I want my contours to be. So next step. Draw the shadow shape. Really, really important, right? So shape, the big shape, the big kahuna. All right. So remember, I'm imagining in my head, there's a bunch of contour lines all through this drawing, right? And I'm gonna pick one. I'm gonna pick this one over here. And I'm gonna say that's gonna be my shape, right? That's gonna be my rough shape for this particular demonstration. And then what's my next step? Because we, we're all relating to what we said before, right? It's really simple, it's not that hard. I go all the way back to here and we say, okay, what's next? I know the shape, I know the drawing, I know the contour. Let's get the value in this mix, okay? So now comes the single most important decision when you're painting, which is what on earth is going to be the local value. What does local value mean? It just means what is the value on something. Everything has an intrinsic value to it, right? You look at your laptop in front of you, you look at the table you're sitting on, look at the room around you. Things can be lighter and darker, but they usually start from a base intrinsic value. That's just your local value. And this happens to be one of your major decisions when it comes to painting, right? So all I have to do is I need to pick something that I think will look decent. And how do I make those decisions? What are the parameters I need to think about? Well, background's a big one, right? I don't want to pick a value of the light that's exactly the same as my background. That might be a very poor decision. So I'm going to quickly do something here. I'm going to make my background a little bit more mid-toned. Let's go ahead and do this. Get that selection. Do that. Get the selection back. Okay, so I'm going to pick a value like this, let's just say, and this is going to be my light value. Really simple, right? That's my light value. And remember, using the wondrous ability that we have discovered, just simply turned halfway to black. The shadows that we kind of achieve from this particular decision are automatic, remember? Quite simple. So let me just turn off my size jitter on my pen, and we can proceed with this. There you go, size going off. So remember, half of the black, really simple, right? We pick this value and we cut it in half. And we get this value. And now I have a beautifully automatically contrasted value. Now remember, I need to maintain that shape. Now I'm not somebody that uses clipping masks. I don't try to paint very cleanly. My work is pretty clean, but I don't paint very cleanly because I'm a very, uh, I come from more of a traditional background with painting. So I don't necessarily uh, use as many tools as I should. But you're welcome to use whatever you need to, to ensure this is clean. And now it's time to reinforce some of the ideas that we've thought about in this entire lecture, right? What are the ideas we talked about? Very simple. Shape, right? Why do I care about the shape? Do I really need to do this old man? Why can't I just do whatever I want? Well, this is why. I grab this value and I go right across and suddenly you don't see a sphere anymore, do you? Now you see something completely different. This could be a folded up circle. This could be some sort of like snippet of a hard surface. But the second I introduce just a little bit of that, you're like, oh, okay, wait a second. Hold up. That's a sphere, right? Because again, the shape tells me everything. And again, you can utilize this concept to kind of describe whatever you want to, right? You draw a robot arm, you draw a dragon's tail, you draw anything. As long as this is doing, it's following your idea in your head, people are gonna see what you're imagining. The shape is everything when it comes to painting. I could choose, do whatever I want to, fancy bond lights, fancy accent lights, all bunch of shit to make sure this looks good. But if this shape is not good, you are not going to see what I see because I'm doing a poor job communicating it. Shape over everything except these ones. Because remember, this little boy over here determines the shape and this guy determines everything. Okay, this is the outside and now this is the inside and then we're going to fill it up with a bunch of juicy little details. So shape next, okay? Shape and then value. How do we get the value? Very simple, right? Halfway to black. So value with halfway to black. Okay, we're doing pretty good. Then what do you do? What did I say before, right? We said, you gotta gradiate. If I wanna make something look real, you have to gradiate. What does that mean? You have to have fall off. You have to have gentle transitions from light to dark, right? Not here, because again, we talked about this last class. That's the area of the Terminator. 
and that's where you want to have good separation but i want to have gradations in the area of the light and i want to have gradations in the area of the dark so how does that happen and how do we go about it here's the principle the principle is that this particular surface and i'll draw a side view of this what's happening is i have the, the curved surface and i have my light source on the very top right over there right this light is hitting so let's just imagine it's on the top right so i have these rays because light travels in straight lines these rays are going down okay and there's a point right over here where anakin turns towards the dark side all right right over there so while this little area over here is the wonderful kingdom of the light blessed be their name praise be their existence here is the empire of the dark all right and we got to be careful because we can't let these two kingdoms mix. They have been at war since either of us ever existed. So you've got to be careful right over there. But here is the kingdom of the light. So even, even though this is a kingdom, right? Not everybody is treated equal. There are some that live on the top. And they experience the full might of the sun's power. And these are the lightest areas. And there are those that live in the indigent masses near the outskirts. And they are not treated as well. Now, while they still might be in the area of light, by no means are these comparable to the paragons that live on the ivory towers, right? So the same way, the ones at the border, these ones over here, are the most villainous, ruthless, dark army members, right? But as I go further and further down, and I go towards my bounce light, then I get these stragglers, the people that... They haven't met these light people in so long, they've forgotten that they hate them. Now, don't get me wrong, they're still evil, they're still dark, but again, they're not as dark as these people who have to fight them every single day. Okay, you can put a narrative like that in your head, or you can just say, as I turn more away from the light, I get a little bit darker, I jump the shadow because that's the absence of light, and I go towards my bounce light, right? So many ways of thinking about this, you pick the one that works for you, okay? But that's the idea behind radiation. Because again, not everybody receives the light in the same way. Because all of these things, going back to the plane idea I keep touching upon, this plane is facing this way, this plane is facing this way, and this plane is facing this way. And one of these things is not like the other, because these things are facing towards my light source, and this one is not. Okay? And that's how I think about the idea of, of radiation, right? I think about including this little snippet of information, which happens to be really important, because this could still be a flat disk. That just so happens to be an optical illusion with the shape associated with it, right? So now I think about my gradation. So what do I do, right? Let's pick a ladder value. If you weren't here for the last class, I explained a very simple idea of, of, of uh, blending, which you don't need any fancy tool for. It's simply the idea. Let me just pick these two values for you. Light value, dark value, right? And all I have to do is I need to transition between this value and then the next value. So what do I do? I set my round brush, because all, all I'm doing is round brush right now. To 50% opacity, I pick this value, you can pick any of the value, and I draw something in between. That is a step, right? It's a stepping stone to a greater harmony between two values, okay? So I just paint in between and I get this. Now I pick the intermediate value and I create another step. And I create another step with the same value, right? So I create a sub-step, right? And again, same thing, I pick the sub-step and I create another value. And I create another value. You see what's happening slowly but surely? We're creating a gradation. So it's all a matter of just painting in between. What do you have to be careful about here? Don't do this, which is painting over two of them at the same time. That's kind of ruining your uh, your contour. You're not making it as clean. But we can just be nice and easy, nice and calculated with this. And we can get nice, simple, easy blends, right? You don't need any fancy tools. This does take a lot of time, but it's really important for this class if you guys are going to be doing the homework to kind of think about following this. I'm not going to make it a rule, but for your own development, I think it'll be important to think about following this kind of method of blending. The reason is, is because what am I doing when I do a single stroke? Every single stroke is following the contour, right? It has to, because if it's not, then the shape that that particular thing creates is not the shape that I've drawn. So ultimately, why do people say hard round brush opacity when they say when you're learning blending? Why do people say hard round brush to learn painting? This is why. Because it forces you to think about what you're doing. It doesn't do things automatically. Because while I'm in full rights to just use an airbrush, right? And just go, okay, airbrush there, airbrush there. Ah, oh, it looks so much better than what I just did, James. You're an idiot. Why do you use round brush? The reason is, is because if I don't know what's happening here, I can never truly understand how to apply this information elsewhere. 
And in fact, you can easily do a mistake here with airbrush as well. What happens if I just do this with an airbrush, right? It's less spherical than this with a round brush. Why? Contour, right? We go back to it. I keep saying it. It's again and again, constantly, because it's important, right? Because you've got to think about this stuff. That's why if at all your drawings look flat or your paintings don't have form, that's probably the main reason beyond just a simple idea that you're not using the correct value. And the value is simple to solve, right? Halfway to black, it'll get you on your way. But the contour and the shape, these things you cannot cheat. You can't cheat those ideas. Okay, very simple. That's the technique that we're going to be using. And I'll also use some airbrush in between just to make this look nice and pretty. Because again, I'm sure that people don't want to be drawing awful things. And uh, it doesn't look that bad with just with just your round brush, but I'm going to make it a little bit easier than it was for me when I first learned this. Okay, so gradation. So remember, just based on the idea we, we demonstrated on this side, we have a lighter value, right? We have a lighter value on top, right over there, let's just say. I come on the wrong layer here. Okay, so we have a lighter value on top. And that's just signifying that's the, that's the area closest to my light source. And we have a slightly light area down here. That's because of the bounce light, right? But remember, when I do these shapes, I have to think about the contour, right? I have to think about the contour. So if I have this and I have this, basically all my work is done. Because remember, there wasn't anything spectacular with their blending technique, right? It wasn't crazy. It wasn't, it wasn't like stupendously hard. All I have to do is use my blending technique in conjunction with my understanding of contour and my job is done. So which is most of the time when you're doing any sort of painting, right? Just finding this step over here, which is the contour and the shape and then maybe the value, your drawing is basically done because everything from that point is just refinement. So let's go ahead and blend this, uh, this sphere for us, right? Let's go ahead and just go from start to finish. It's gonna be a little bit tedious, but it's fine. We just stick with it and we'll be very slow and methodical with our technique. So. Let's go ahead and set our blending our brush to 50% and we just go ahead and start to follow that contour as best as we can. All right? There's some nuance here, we'll talk about that in a second. But again, we just need to do very little to make this look good. And that's our lights already looking pretty okay, right? Already looking more spherical. With every step we take, with every move you make, we get closer and closer to getting the sphere looking more spherical. Right, now this looks a little bit awkward to you, right? And why? Because now, using your, your brilliant mind, you said, Hey, James, you're not really following the contour with that one, huh? And you're right, I'm not. Right? So let's fix it. Because again, it's easy to make a mistake. And in fact, it's one of my more complicated paintings, right? There's just so many spheres. There's just so, much, so many things to think about that sometimes I just forget. So I need to go back and remind myself, Hey, what are you doing over here, dude? Think about what's more important. This fancy bounce light or the shape? And the answer is always the shape. So now I go here and I say, Hey, listen, maybe that's not enough bounce light, chief. Let's go ahead and add a little bit more, right? I'm gonna add a bit more bounce light right over there. So we add a bit more. Very simple, right? And you see, that's a little bit of an oopsie by me. Like I said, make sure that you cover things, be nice and methodical. You can still fix stuff. No issue, it happens naturally. But now as I slowly start to do this, now suddenly everything looks more spherical. Why is that? Because we're starting to follow the contour on every one of our strokes, right? On every one of these strokes, it's following a spherical contour. And again, this is complicated because you have to think about this stuff all the time as you're doing it. You can't let yourself split because every time you have one of these strokes that does not follow the spherical contour, that's making your sphere just a little bit less spherical, right? Because I could easily do a better job than this, right? I'm just going through this very quickly. But if I did a better job, I would be rewarded with a better looking sphere. Okay, now some specific information. Right over here, it still gradiates. But remember my lecture last time about the idea that you always want to have good separation between light and dark? Because they're not friends, remember, right? They're enemies, they're rivals. So when the light goes into the dark, it does so not gently, it does so screaming because there's a plunge from light to dark, right? And they call that the separation of light and dark, especially if you're taking it in the illustration course, They'll harp on this to, to, a, to the end of days because drawings like this are built upon this concept that the light and the dark has to be uh, separated. This is by Mead Schaefer, by the way. It's a really good painting. M-E-A-D Schaefer. So, while I still want to retain the idea of a plunge of darkness, I don't want to do so so harshly because this indeed does gradiate. 
Do I need to break out the airbrush just yet? I don't need to, right? All I have to do is ensure this Terminator has a slight amount of little itty bitty transition. So I just to be kind of gentle with my brush here. Let's do that again. So again, little bits of transition right there. Because again, it does so harshly, but not that harsh. That, if it just transitions immediately, that's a little bit too harsh. So you see, as I do this, it starts to become a bit more natural. That's a little bit of information right there. And again, there's so much nuance to this idea. There's just so many nuanced ideas over here that I'm simplifying. And this is why, at this point, I would like to encourage you, right? If you are somewhat of an experienced artist, and you're already producing good quality work, you don't necessarily need to follow any of this stuff, right? You're probably doing most of it already automatically. But if you're somebody that's never done a sphere before, and you just really want to know how to paint, then this is the kind of thing for you, because realize everything that I'm doing so far is just rules, all right? And technically, there are no rules if you get advanced enough. But this is giving you enough of a leg up to say, okay, now I can do a sphere this particular way, but it's not exactly what I want to. So let me start to adapt this technique. All I'm offering you is the basic tool set that you will further upgrade with your own information scavenging. Okay? But I add the little core shadow there. I add a little bit of a transition. And it's looking a little bit better. Right? All I have to do is kind of blur up that center. Right? I'm just going to call it good enough for now. Of course, I can work on that a little bit more. But since we've got to keep moving, we'll keep moving. I encourage you to be very careful with that core shadow. Mine's a little bit sloppy, but I'm not too particularly... Uh, bothered by that right now okay so gradation is the next step right so the two gradations are this bounce light to core shadow and your specular your your matte specular all the way down to your core shadow or you can just call this the area of light i think that's more common in books these days the area of light to the half tone and the core shadow to the bounce light your two areas of gradation light to dark and light to dark right but just remember this value and this value they need to be separated, right? And I'm drawing a pretty separated cube. In reality, because this is based on the values that I picked, in reality, I feel like these would be a lot closer together. And I think to get more of a natural contrast, I would probably bring them a bit closer together. Just by kind of slightly adjusting the value here. Because I don't want to have a hyper, hyper contrast of cubes, or hy hyper contrasted spheres. Something like that seems a little bit more natural in my eye. Okay, but this is good enough to kind of go for. If I look at the, the spheres that I have for this one, let me go ahead and quickly retrieve that because I have a simple sphere drawing or a simple shape drawing of this particular thing. I'll be able to show you just, just about how I use my spheres in my main drawings. But I think it might be interesting for you to see. Let's go ahead and grab that for you. So here is a simplified form painting of this particular crab. Here you go. So you see the sphere that I have over here? It's a very quick little sphere. It's kind of similar, right? There's some little hokey pokey things happening, but that and that that I just drew, not that dissimilar, right? You can kind of see the interaction now. So like I said, you're already most of the way there. Right? You just have to follow the steps, and again, you can just basically finish this painting by yourself, and then this painting is not that hard after you finish that. So what is next on the little checklist? Let's go through these kind of quickly, because the further we get to, the less important they become, they're still pretty important. How do I upgrade? So now the big question, and why should I care to go past this point is that I have a sphere, sure, but I want to make it look better. I want to make it look more round. So from here on out, this is the min your minimum requirement. From here on out, it's things to make my, my sphere look more spherical. The first one and the most exciting one is specular light. I'm going to offer you a very simple way to get specular. You can use it for your portraits, you can use it for anything. You grab an airbrush. You can do this with a round brush, but it takes a bit more time. This, this is my method of doing it. You grab a lighter value. Generally speaking, whenever I want to get a lighter or darker value on the spot, all I do is I just pick the value and I just try to double it if I can, right? So I just double this and I get a lighter value. Of course, there I can't because it's so close to the top, but it gives you a good idea. And I let my brush pressure do the rest. So basically, I just want a lighter value. So I pick a lighter value and I do a little bit of a spot here, right? A bit of a spot with a certain brush size. Now, again, this is a simple rule, simple rule set to kind of achieve a good looking specular. I do a dot. I increase the size of my brush and I do the same dot. I increase the size of my brush and do the same dot. So basically what I'm creating is a gradiated specular, right? And if you do that very subtly, you can slowly but surely end up with a decent looking specular light, right? Let's try it again. Maybe the slightly lighter value. So I go here and I start with my simple, small specular light, right? Very small. And I add a bit more, larger brush, larger brush, larger brush. Larger brush, and then suddenly, slowly but surely, we get that 
attractive looking specular which is pretty cool to see right it's pretty interesting now there is a caveat to this right when you put this into your sphere you can't do so willy-nilly right you have to still consider a little bit towards the contour so if i was just to make a giant specular that would like, look like that congratulations i just killed my roundness but just a little subtle one like that with a little bit of cutting off just remembering the contour just a little bit this can tend to look a little bit good this can tend to look okay so i might touch maybe make that slightly lower Remember, I'm not talking about materials here, so I'm not going to talk about how much to put the specular. Just a little bit of a slightly dimmer specular can make things look lovely, right? Maybe I'll add a bit more of a larger airbrush there. It's kind of make things look a little bit better. There you go. That's your specular light, right? A very simple idea of specular. Really, really simplified. I can't stress on that enough. And there's so much more to this. But I think for now, just to add a specular to your drawings, I think it's sufficient, right? It's okay. What comes after your specular light? So after your specular, you have this called tangential lights. Your tangential lights. Some people also call this ambient lights or accent lights. A really big part of spheres, honestly. A really large part of doing spheres. So what is this? If I look at, let's just grab some um, some of the reference that I have here to kind of explain this. So this will be here on the spinning by, I think this is Ate Galleon from the Riot team for Valorant. This is a splash art, I'm sorry, this is a promotional artwork. So this over here, that's an accent line, right? And this is kind of meant to accentuate stuff. You can kind of think about what I'm going to do right now, just like this, because it's adding something externally that traditionally you wouldn't really think about, right? Because when he did this illustration, I don't know if they told him there's going to be a red in the background, but he had this in his process, he adds an accent light because it tends to add a lot to the presentation because it's an additional, it's additional information about, you guessed it, our, our good friend, the contour, right? Because again, the shape of this light the shape of this accent light is giving us additional information about what's happening in space because he's just not doing random ideas on the side of this chin it's very specific right see this little curve over there on the on the mask it curves this way indicating that it's semi-spherical right you see this little idea over here it's indicating the trapezius it's indicating i'm sorry and it's indicating the uh, the sternocleidomastoid right it's indicating all of these things this little idea over here is indicating the bump in the armor so remember, shape over everything in this particular case. So we can have a similar idea in our spheres. Let's create a new layer. We'll grab a light and we'll put a little bit of light on both sides, right? We'll put a light over there. I'll we'll put a light over here. Now, here's a big problem with this. I'm not doing what I said I was going to do, right? I made you a promise all those years ago and I've not fulfilled it, which was I said, mother, I'm going to always follow the contour no matter where I go. I will always follow the code and I have failed, right? So I need to retrace my steps, I need to find my redemption arc, and I need to simply go ahead and erase with my eraser, this is a new layer, but I erase in the shape of the contour, right? I'm going this way, if you see my mouse, I'm going that way. I'm not doing this, which is straight up, because that's killing my roundness. I'm going with the contour, with the contour on that side, with the contour on this side, because again, I'm creating additional shapes with the contour, to show me additional information about what's happening. Now this whole value might be a little bit too high. I'm gonna cut it a bit more by adjusting the opacity. You can do this by erasing, you can just redraw it with lower ideas. I think that looks comfortable to me. So what do I end up with? So this is the change we just did. We went from here to here. It looks a little bit rounder, huh? Hmm, why is it that? Because A, I'm adding more information about that contour. Now not on the horizontal axis, but on the vertical axis, right? Same thing can be done for the bottom here, right? Same thing can be done for the bottom. So let me just collapse that. I can, I can think, okay, maybe there's some stuff that's going to create accent lights on the bottom. If you ask me, James, what's creating this accent light? I don't know. It could be anything right now because the sphere is in a vacuum. But ultimately, I know it's going to look good. I know it's going to give me more information, which is why I'm going to do it, right? When I get to more complicated paintings, I will be able to kind of draw upon the information on in the background and on proximal objects to give me a much more solid grounded idea about wh why these things are happening. I'll give you an example. Take the Viking thing that I, that I drew. I'm sure somewhere in this whole situation, I kind of bullshitted my way through an accent light, right? So let's just go ahead and think about maybe the horns over here. I said the horns need to be, need to be much more rounder. So I said, hey, let's imagine kind of moonlight or something like that and we'll draw the singular light over here we say okay that's my accent light that's not bounce light right because what on earth would be bouncing in that direction but the second i add that it adds more to my presentation and this comes back to a pretty important point that i don't want to touch upon too strongly right now 
But for my line of work, and if you want to be a concept artist, realize that these fundamental tools, they're really, really important. It's really, really important to think about using them to aid in your communication, not just to just follow a bunch of rules. So when I when you do a painting like this, eventually you're going to say, all right, so I really want to show this little protruding antenna. So you'll say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and add specular right over there. I'm going to go ahead and add more core shadow. I'm going to add more bounce light. All of these tools are aiding in my communication because they're just that. There are no rules, only tools, right? So tangential, like, so the second I add that, right? Now you're like, oh, wait a second, looks more round immediately. I might cut that slightly. I might cut it ever so slightly, just like that. Now I get more roundness in there, right? What more can I add to my list to ensure that I have good communication of a sphere? We can try to implement an additional, maybe a much stronger core shadow. Right? I can think about adding more to my core shadow. So we can go back to our core shadow here. I can say, okay, maybe I want this to be a little bit more darker. Because the darker the core shadow, generally the rounder something's going to look. Right? So I can go back here. I can just a little bit teeny tiny increase the core shadow value. And I can go here. I can add a, add a little bit more to the core. So you see when I add that in there, adds a bit more to my presentation. Right? Adds a bit more of that roundness. So I seem to be adding much more contrasted values here. And it's ultimately making my thing look a little bit more glossy or metallic. That's okay. I'm not going to be a stickler with material for this particular one. Maybe later on when we talk about materials, if I ever take a material class, we can go into that. But right now, I think we're in pretty good shape, right? So this is where we're at right now. But don't forget the also important idea. When I do anything, and you should have stopped me earlier, but when I do anything here, way back all the way to our shape, there's something we missed here, which is your cast shadow really really important when you do anything for me or do anything for concept you have to at least consider the fact that you might want to be adding cast shadow now for studio work it's going to depend right so for example this is a uh, by zeronis he's a riot um, concept artist he chooses not to add it into his presentation right this is by who is this by anthony miko this one has cast shadow but you see this tends to be a lot more grounded than this it's ultimately the studio's choice, but for, you, for now, I kind of want you to think about cast shadow just so you know how to do it, or just so you have practice with doing it. Now, again, this is something I invite you to look into your own time, your cast shadows. I'm not going to teach the cast shadow method right now, because I think it went a little bit too complicated for our uh, for our cubes the last time. So we can just think about simply, light goes down, we simply have a cast shadow right below our object, like that. And again, we fill this up with a value, but again, Going back to our idea, how do I choose value? Halfway to blank is a great way to start, right? So I pick the value in the background, I cut it in half, and what do I have? I have a value that is significantly contrasted, right? Maybe a bit too much, right? Maybe a bit too much. I will adjust it very, ever so slightly. That looks okay. Right? Maybe even a bit more lighter than that. It's based on my taste. How am I making this decision, by the way? It's because I've done so many spheres that I kind of know what I like to see. I kind of know what looks good and then what doesn't. And that's exactly why I ask you to do the cubes, right? So while doing those cubes, most of the time, most of the time, you guys have most likely, if you guys did the homework, you realized, okay, you realize how you like to do things. You realize what looks good, what looks bad. These are, these are things you can only get by doing things, just by doing the application, right? Okay, so let's just say I have my cast shadow. I can kind of play around with this a little bit, just to make things look a little bit better for presentation. There's still a couple of things we need to talk about here, and then we're done with the demo, and I can start looking at your homework. Okay, so let's just say that's my cast shadow. Pretty simple. So, in the cast shadow, remember, it's not that the cast shadow doesn't obey these rules. Even the cast shadow will gradiate, right? So, how do I gradiate my cast shadow? It's very simple. I go ahead and I grab a selection of that shadow. And my tool right now that I'm going to talk about is just the idea of ambient occlusion, right? I'm going to say that towards the bottom of that sphere, I'm going to get way more darkness down here right way more darkness there's going to be darkness radiating all the way outward now there is something to consider here and this might be an alarm and some of you more advanced artists in here you might say okay well sure the bounce side works that way to a certain degree but wouldn't the bottom of the sphere have a bit more darkness it will right but i'm not going to explain double bounce i'm not going to go that deep right now i think this is sufficient because most of the time uh, i'm going to only use this car shot of a presentation in your actual drawings the the thing's going to be suspended in the air in which case this particular thing kind of applies a bit more the the bounce light for now i'm going to keep it very very simple but again i always advise you to look up the information in your own time and 
try to marry that with the information that I'm giving you. But again, I try to give you more rules right now, it's more things that will always kind of look good. And then you can think about the nuance about it in your own time or maybe in further more advanced lessons. But this is a 101 basic lesson. So we keep things much more simpler. Okay. I have the shadow value below my cube, or below my sphere rather. Maybe add a bit more of that. You can think about this as a contact shadow if you'd like. That's my first priority when it comes to the shadow. Additionally, right? Additionally, I need to make sure that me, my edges of my shadow are a little bit less hard. Because again, light, fall off, gradation, all these ideas are playing in tandem with each other. And they're all telling me that this particular shadow cannot be very stiff. It must be gradiated. There are a bunch of ways to do that. A very simple way, if you guys are familiar with the tool set that you use, you can just simply Gaussian blur this. A small amount if you like if you are somebody that uses a lot of tools you can get a very comfortable looking shadow something like this maybe it looks very pretty for presentation right it's kind of cool a very simple idea of that shadow if you don't want to use that perfectly fine all i have to do is i need to grab the background value with my airbrush i just need to airbrush it in all i'm doing is i'm softening that corner edge because it can't be that hard right it simply can't be why because of light fall off very simple So I just go ahead and I go around my sphere, right? This is just for my presentation. Right over there. Okay, so is that it? No, because remember, if you guys were here for our cube demo, you have to consider your background and your floor. This is really big. And if you're going to take one thing away from this entire presentation, it's going to be this. Right? Beyond shape, if you didn't know that already. But if you're going to give me anything, if you're going to paint anything, please bear in mind that your background and your floor are really, really powerful tools that you can use uh, for your own benefit, right? So what, what am I talking about here? I'm, I'm saying that whenever you do anything, whenever you're presenting anything, the background is a really big part in trying to ensure that things are readable. Imagine if this background over here, Bian Sombra, was the same color as her hair. Right? Imagine right below here with Yone. Like imagine if this, this whole darkness or the background behind his legs were the same value as his legs. The artist has made a very conscious decision here to ensure that everything is supporting everything else. Right? It's really, really important. So if I take if I just give you a standard idea just like this, and I say I want to make it even better, I have a light here. I can add just a little bit of darkness on top, right? To make this light even more light. Right? I can take a dark and make this area right behind even more dark. And all these ideas of affecting the background, what are they doing? They're just serving to increase my presentation value, right? I add a bit of light behind the dark. I add a bit of dark behind the light. And lo and behold, it's increasing the overall effect. It's increasing the overall beauty, the, the powerfulness of the communication. Just by adjusting the background, I make a good thing look even better. And it'll make a bad thing look at least good if you consider the background just a little bit. Because all too often I see people, they do beautiful work, especially on this Discord, right? They do beautiful work, but they don't pay attention to the background. And if you're one of those people that do beautiful paintings, because I'm sure you do, and you put it against a stark white plain background, congratulations, you just ruined your effort. You cooked me a beautiful filet mignon steak and you served it to me on a trash can. Because again, the background is such a big part of the presentation. You see how much of an impact that just had? It's kind of crazy, right? We go from that to that, and it looks more professional, looks more interesting, looks more viable. Right? It's a realistic thing. So please, do not forget the idea of your background and floor. It is so important for your presentation. Because later on, when you do full stuff like this, you better, be, you better realize that all this stuff is a conscious decision by me to say, okay, I'm going to add some darkness back here. You know, I'm losing this value. I need to add more lightness back here. This is too distinct. I'm going to add more darkness back here. It's something that I think about. And it's something that all of these artists think about, right? All of them think about this. So please don't forget your background and your floor. It's so important. Okay? But at the end of the day, we've gone all the way from drawing, contouring, shape, value, gradation, specular, tangential, core shadow, cast shadow, background, and floor. And these are just rules. But now it's the time to point out all these ideas to point out the most important idea over here, which is very simple. How many decisions did I make? Because art is hard, man. I don't want to keep second guessing myself. But what are my decisions? Here, here they are. I'll point them out to you. Number one, I chose to draw a sphere, right? 
Number two, I chose the shape based on where my light source was in space, right? And I chose this shape. Number three, I chose the light value. I chose this value in my light. Did I make any other decision? Not really, right? Maybe you can count the tangential light direction as a decision, but I don't count it as a decision. It's not a major decision. I could, I could have chosen anything and it would have looked fine. But I made one, two, three decisions to create this. And what's really funny about that is when I do a painting like this, I make the exact same number of decisions just for every part. I say, okay, what am I drawing? What is the shape? Okay, and what is my light value? And I, I swear everything else is basically automatic, which is kind of crazy to think about. Because this is the, the kind of thinking that I really want you to encourage. I want to encourage you to think about because when you look at work that's better than yours, and there is work that's better than yours, there's work that's better than mine, there's work that's better than probably everybody here. You shouldn't be looking at it in the pure sense of, oh my goodness, he's so much better than me. You should be trying to break it down with the information that you know and say, huh, do I know the steps he took? If I look at this diva, whatever I learned in today's lesson, can I apply that really? Let's go ahead and check this. Let's find out, right? Let's find out. So let's go ahead and look at this. Huh, interesting. Specular light, huh? Okay. What's this? Oh, core shadow. Okay. Radiation in between. Interesting. All right. I can kind of see what's happening. Is that consistent throughout the entire drawing? Oh, look at this. Specular light, core shadow, radiation, tangential light or bounce light, depending on what you want to think about. It's all there. So what is the artist's decision over here? He said, I'm going to draw this. I'm going to choose the, the value, right? Which is going to be this. Of course, this color. We can talk about that later. And then, then what did he say? He said, okay, for this color, I'm pretty sure this is going to be somewhat well contrasted. And then that's going to be automatic, 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 automatic. Kind of funny, right? So it's not that complicated, right? It's tedious. Like I said before, it's tedious to think about all this stuff, especially when you're a beginner. There's so much to remember. But all you've got to do is grab a post-it note, grab a permanent marker, write all this stuff down. And when you're doing your paintings, ask yourself, am I following this? Because any one of these steps that you miss is lowering the overall quality of your presentation. And if you miss these ones, you're not even doing what you want to do, right? You're not even showing me what you want to show. These ones are kind of icing on the cake. These ones are the cake, right? So again, decreasing value of priority. But this, I think this is basically where we're at with spheres. I think that's our, that's our whole demonstration here. So again, we can go ahead and start or much more simply. Let me go ahead and check my DMs really quickly here. I think I have a message from somebody. Uh, I think they're pretty okay. But somebody submitting their homework a little bit late. Shame on you. But I think we should be pretty good to go. Uh, hey, fetching's in here. I'm going to unmute fetching. My boy right there. All right. So that's our full demo for our spheres. Um, I think we should be pretty good to go here. Let's do just a really quick one to run over everything we just learned from start to finish. If you'd like, you can do it along with me, but uh, there's no pressure. So again, I'm going to go ahead and group all the stuff that I just did for this page. And we'll go start to finish. We'll review everything that we just learned. Okay, so me, James, wake up in the morning, brush my teeth. I say I want to draw a sphere. All right, pretty cool. What do I do? First step, draw the sphere. I'm lazy as hell. I use the selection tool. Big world. Next step. Contouring. I have it in my head, right? I remember it. Next step, value. What on earth is the local value of this in the light? I'm going to say, let's just pick this. Random value. Okay. Next step, remember, decisions, right? Figure out the shape, the shape of the sphere. I'm going to say it's going to be something like this. Remember, the shape is in tandem with the value. No, let's just, let's just break it down even further. Again, I always say this in the previous class, and I haven't said it enough in this class. If you are struggling, that doesn't mean you can't do it. That just means that you need to add an additional step. So your business is not to complain or to ask, you can ask people questions about it, but your major goal and your major focus should be, what the hell is that step? Because you cannot say you can't do something. You can, right? It's just a matter of tedium. It's a matter of whether you're willing to sit down and go through every single step, right? Quality work is not precluded by experience, right? Speed is precluded by experience. But quality work is precluded by effort, right? That's the only thing keeping you from doing it. And we got limited time in our day. We can't just sit for 20 hours and do a stupid form painting. And I agree with you. But remember that you can do it, right? It's just about finding the steps. So additional step here. I use form off a sphere, right? And I get this idea in my head. Okay, okay, pretty good. Pretty cool, James. Nice, nice red line. Let's fill it up with a value. Halfway to black, I fill it up really simply. And I don't do this. I don't do this. I fill it up with a contour right 
right over there and again i'm going to encourage you guys just to do spheres like this for right now just from the top down just to get comfortable because there's a lot to think about right i think we can all agree on that we can maybe get complex more complex next week but i draw the contour and then it's a simple idea right you can i can even go faster than this right if i choose to use tools i can use my airbrush and say you know what bam right bam just like that i follow the contour with my airbrush with my airbrush but remember i don't do this because again even though the airbrush is a fancy schmancy tool it does not allow me to skip the step of contour that needs to exist which is why again this goes back to the rules why did i do all of this so that when i do this it's much more informed because now i know how valuable contouring is which is why you guys can produce me for the homework you can do use, use all airbrush but i kind of encourage you guys to do some of it at least with round brush just to kind of get this idea of contour in your head there's so much nuance about it that i really want you to think about at least using it a couple of times okay so i get that right next step gradation big whoop all right gradation ba boom from the top all the way to the bottom right gradation from the bounce light from the bottom all the way to the mid and again when i'm making these strokes notice how i'm moving my hand it's not this it's this curved motions why contour everything has an explanation nothing is random here right there are certainly a, a good number of artists that say i don't know why i'm doing this but you best believe that they've been doing this for so long that this stuff has become really intuitive to them here where we are right we're at this stage let's go ahead and add that cast shadow i'm craving it i need it let's add that cast shadow down here again how do i select the cast shadow value halfway to black it right very simple Half of the black that background. We go from here all the way to there, and you go ba boom. Bob's your uncle. Really easy. All right. Then I say, all right, car shadow, maybe a little bit too too dark. Let me grab it again. Where are you? There you are. So I can increase the value slightly. Okay, looks pretty okay. Maybe some people prefer the other one. That's fine. I add that darkness to the contact shadow. Very simple. Again, just following rules, right? Just following rules. Some of them are slightly out of order. That's okay, because these are the lower priority ones. I meddle, I meddle with that little contact, the, uh, the fall off of the light right there to create that shadow, to make it look nice and natural. So I blur that shadow on the outside. Okay, then what do I do? Remember the list, right? Can always consult the list. If you guys are taking notes here, just again, this is what I did in my school, right? I Basically, I wrote all this stuff down on a sticky note. I put it on the side of my laptop. And I just followed it. Even though I had a bunch of illustration experience before that, this really did help me. Because it helped me think about the stuff that I'm missing. Because this is ground zero, right? This is the threefold path. And we're all on it. So go in here. Specular light, right? Always looks pretty good. So we add that specular using the simple technique. What did I say? Grab a lighter value, hit it with a little bit, increase the brush size, increase the brush size, increase the brush size. Really simple, right? It's it's a crazy caveman way of doing specular. And there's probably so many better ways, but this is really simple. And that's why I teach it first, right? Very simple way of getting specular. It looks fairly okay. But in a pinch, this is what I use. Then what's next? Simple ideas, very, very simple. We talk about the idea of tangential light, right? We go from here, and we go from here. Nice and simple, but remember, contour really really important do not ever forget contouring so you contour that on both sides we even have the same idea down here right Control g i can just do some creta backend magic to ensure that i'm still painting on what i want to paint on there you go fix it so i go ahead and add the tangential from this side tangent from this side and i make sure that when i erase I erase it al along the contour, really, really important. The eraser is actually your one of your biggest tools, by the way, because what the eraser is basically telling me is that I can do whatever I want, and then I can start to shape it. It's your sculpting tool, it's your scalpel, right? So I can do whatever I want, but then I can make sure it's controlled. And again, the beauty of that is it's an additional step, you see, because I could do this this way. I could make sure the contour is perfect. Okay, so much effort, so much pressure. Or, me being a beginner, I go ba bam and then I add the step of erasing it for the same result, right? Really cool. And this is really what you should be thinking about. If you really want to expedite your improvement as an artist, as a painter, as a human being, think about what the steps are. Don't think about the process that a master painter does. 
Think about all the steps you can add in between that process to make it achievable by you. These guys have been added since we were, we were born, basically, right? Since before we were born. But if we are able to just bridge the gap between those major steps and add a bunch of little minor baby steps for us to kind of crawl over, we can achieve the same results. These steps, for sure, cost us time, right? They cost us a bunch of time. But they do not prevent us from getting results. And that's the most important thing because we want results. We crave it. We want to be good. And we can. It's just a matter of effort now, right? With a little bit of direction, it's possible. So tangential, we get right over there. The core shadow is kind of taken care of. And this looks pretty nice already. It looks pretty decent. I can elevate the core shadow just a little bit more. I can add a bit more core there. If I choose to, there's no compulsion. There's no need. There's no, no necessity. But we can do it if we need to. Bit more core shadow there. Kind of looks kind of spicy. And what do we do here again? I, I beg you to, to ask the question, how many decisions did we make? Not that many. I drew it, I contoured it, I picked the light value, and boom, sphere, out of nowhere. Because we have a good, direct process in order to achieve these results. And that's the real, real powerful idea of these rules, of, the, of what we're trying to uh, propose here. Because it's not guesswork. Everything has a purpose, everything has a reason, and we just have to remember them in order for us to achieve our results. And now you're going to say, James, wait a second, you big dumb idiot. You forgot the background, you forgot the floor. And I'm going to be like, yeah, you're right. Please don't, please don't yell at me. I'm sensitive. So we go back. We go back. And we say, all right. Add in that darkness on the side. Right? And now we are, we are upgrading our presentation. We add that darkness on both sides. Why darkness? Why darkness, James? Because... This is light, so I want to contrast it better with the background, so I add a bit of darkness. Same logic, but the reverse. This is dark, I want to contrast it better. So again, if there's going to be one, one takeaway, one major one, if you're already an intermediate artist, if you're not doing this, please, for the love of God, do this. Which is, when you give me a presentation of something, at least consider the background. It is so important, right? So, so important. You can't show me 20 inch diamond rims in your car, but just driving a fucking shitty ass mater pickup truck, right? The entire presentation matters for the things that you make, for the, for the decisions that you take to really be seen in the light that you wish that they could be seen. So remember your presentation, so, so important. And then we're done. And we have a wonderful looking sphere. From start to finish, purely rule-based, right? Rule-based sphere. Now there's so much nuance again. There's double bounce light to consider. There's um, diffuse light to consider. There's color to consider, material to consider. But these are all gonna be built upon the foundation that I've just laid for you. Because once you have something like, something like this, it's not that hard to do anything you want. Let's just say that this was like a furry ball. It's not that difficult to make that transition, right? But remember, everything that I just did is important and I cannot interrupt that. So all I have to do on top of that is just add a, add a bit of edge and I can create some crazy looking things, right? So a bit of edge there, a bit of edge on the specular. And I have a round looking ball. That's going to look a little bit more fur-like. But the, the key here is that it's a ball. So therefore, whatever I do before, all the steps that I've taken before, I cannot ever betray those steps. And believe me, this is going to happen to you. Because it's happened to me and it's happened to basically every artist I know. Which is when you go from doing more complex ideas, like when you're doing your, your larger paintings, you will forget your roots. You will forget where you came from. And you will think, I don't need this goddamn gradation bounce line anymore. Well, then your pain is going to get worse and you're going to come back crawling. You're going to say, oh my goodness, please take me back. Because... Whenever you do more complexity on top of a painting, we lose the simple ideas. But remember our priority list. If I don't have my shape, if I don't have my value, if I don't have my drawing, nothing else matters. Because those are the things that are most important, right? So if I lose sight on these things over here, all this additional dressing is for nothing. People are just going to laugh at us and say, oh, wow, great job with the texture brushes. What did you do? Download a brush pack? Maybe learn your fundamentals, right? We don't want that, right? We never want that to be us. So... Before we do all this stuff, keep it nice and simple. Keep it to the basic spheres, okay? And then once you do that, we can think about all of this beautiful dressing we can put on top. Like a little bit of ridges, a little bit of bumps, a little bit of lumps. Perfectly fine. Comes later. Right now, let's start with baseline spheres. So that's it for our demo. We're going to go over some homework uh, with the time that I have left. But that's our demo for spheres. Hopefully all that made sense. Please remember to add the steps as per needed. If you're more advanced and you still want to do the homework, I welcome you to do it. Uh, but just remember, this is your baseline. If you just make these three decisions, I guarantee you, 
your work's gonna look better than mine. Because me being me, I have to rush through this entire thing because I need to get back to my work. But if you just take your time with this, I can guarantee you results. Which is a very rare thing to say, right? Because when's the last time you took a tutorial and the guy said, you know what? You're gonna be able to do this. I guarantee you. You'll be like, yeah, fucking no way. But you can do this. Like, you can do this at the end of the day, right? You just need to, to take into account the steps. And if at all you're going through any issue, just add additional steps. And you'll be perfectly fine. Okay? So, are there any more questions? Are there any more questions about this, about the spheres? We can take them now. But beyond that, I think we're good to go for the homework. So, uh, while you guys are getting your questions ready, if, you, if it's all there any, I ask you for the next week, using this technique, give me, again, 2 into 83 pages, 83 format as a resolution of spheres, 8 spheres per page. That's today's homework, if you would like to do that. And remember, this is not for me, this is for you. I will review it if you'd like me to. But remember, there's I keep talking about nuance, I keep talking about additional information. When you do these, that's when you know what you don't know. Because information is so cheap, you must temper knowledge with experience, because without experience, knowledge is worthless. Anybody can talk a big game, right? We've all watched billions of YouTube tutorials about a bunch of stuff. Can we draw like those artists? No, right? Why? Because we haven't put the time in just yet. But we will be able to, right? We're on the path. We just gotta put the time in. So please put the time in for you, not for me. Okay, that's our homework. That's your two pages. You wait uh, halfway to black. What do you mean by that? Sorry if I missed it. Halfway to black is very simple. It just means that I made the decision to pick this as my light value when we were really, really simple. When we were at this stage, right? Back, way back when, when we were a young warthog. Back here, I said, I make this sphere this light. And to find the initial shadow value, I pick this value and I cut it in half to get half weight to black. And then I follow my contour to get the shadow value. And it's simply a starting point for you to always ensure that you don't run into the issue that your drawings are not contrasted well enough. Because everybody's been there. Everybody's worked for 16 hours on a goddamn value painting and you show it to your best friend and say, hey, look at this, man, I just drew Selena Gomez or something. And you'll be like, yeah, that's pretty cool, but you know, maybe maybe push the shadows, maybe push the lights. Don't let that happen to you. Half of the black it. And if you maintain this through your entire piece, most of the time, things are gonna be well contrasted. Okay, that's half of the black. I just didn't understand the abbreviation. Yeah, I wrote H to be halfway to black. That's H to B. Yeah, it's just it's just a smaller way of writing it. I think we should be pretty, pretty good to go. Um, I don't think there are any more questions. I think we're pretty pretty okay. Nice. All right. I think we're in pretty good standing here so far. Let's go ahead and look at some homework, huh? So I have I think eleven minutes more. I think if the mods allow me, I'd really like just the room to just put the homework in on the on the Discord, just so there's a place that you, you guys can see everybody else's work. But you're welcome to put it in the chat for now if you'd like to. Uh, are limited values fine if it's a conscious choice? Yeah, for sure. I think uh, limited values are, are perfectly fine. In fact, I would encourage it if you're first starting to learn, because again, it's basically thinking about the larger, more important stuff. Because by limited value, you're just saying draw contour shape value. That's it. You're not gradiating. So, like I said, with this kind of checklist, and this is how I marry the concept of limited value studies, is that you're keeping things really simple. And you can get a lot of work done, right? Let's take this uh, Arte Galleon stuff for Valorant. Like, he's simply painting without that much radiation, right? Because his shapes, I mean, look at this. And we compare that. Okay, maybe that's a little bit stream inappropriate. Is there, is there a similar shape? Ah, whatever. We are, we're out. Everybody mature here, right? We're good. Okay, so on our, on our right breast, look at what's happening here, right? There's not that much radiation. But remember, everything we just talked about still applies remember light shadow bounce light right same idea on the other side as well light shadow and the, no bounce light here because there's ambient occlusion we'll talk about that in a later class but it's still the same idea right we're still back all the way back to our fundamental there it's still the very same thing it's perfectly possible can i replace the shadows with color for example some white and purple you can do that it does involve me to uh, it does uh, require me to kind of explain, if you don't know it already, a little bit of color theory. Uh, but if you already have a good dress of color, I don't discourage it. If you want to make it more fun for yourself, by all means, uh, do color spheres, right? And maybe we can talk about color a little bit if you submit the homework. I don't mind it at all. 
hypothetically, if a sphere was a multicolor surface, would you apply the same concept? Of course. So uh, there's a good example of this in the, in the Robinson book, right? But let's consider this really quickly. I think this is a great question. If I had a sphere, and these are, these are the local colors of the sphere, right? I have a sphere that's light, but somewhere in between, it goes darker. So I have a light, dark sphere in the middle. It's cut in the center, and it's being lit from the top. How do I how do I shadow this? So complicated. How do I make sure people know it's a shadow and not just a local value? This is how. Right? So let me just first of all take care of the contour. Really simple. Contour like that. Now I have a partially uh, light dark sphere. I'm gonna light this from the top. Really simple. Let's make a selection here. So in this area right over here, I half it a black for the shadow value right there. So I get this value as a shadow for this particular value, this, this particular local local uh, color. And for this area, I half it a black that local value, and I get this. So all that happens is that you've got to consider the local value in turn and pick the corresponding half with a black to make everything consistent. And there's actually a really good exercise in the Robinson book about this to paint multicolored um, cubes. Really fantastic exercise about that. Apply the same thing to spheres. Totally possible. Does James have somewhere we can see more of his art? You can follow me on Instagram if you'd like. Um, I can put the link on there for you. But I think we're it. That's it for questions. Let's go ahead and look at some of your homework. And if I don't get to you today, because I think I don't have that much time left, I will get to you throughout the week whenever I have time. Because I don't want your work to go unevaluated. Also, at this point, I think I want to kind of run over some people on the Discord that I think you can always talk to if you need additional advice. Because again, it's not like I'm the master of any of this stuff. My, my work is okay, but it's not great. If you can, if you ever see some of these people that I've already, that I know for a fact, they know all these things pretty well. You can talk to them if you can't talk to me. Because again, it's all about the amount of information we have. So we can be at higher steps or lower steps, doesn't matter. What matters is we're willing to kind of share it. So you can talk to Josh if you want, if you see JSH on Discord. He knows what he's talking about. Um, Jesse T, I've been talking to him about this for a month now on the Discord. He's been doing cylinders and spheres for me, so he'll know what he's talking about. And there's just a bunch of really, really, really good artists on here that'll maybe be able to help you. And it might be really fascinating for you to, to, to hear about, right, from a different perspective. Like we got Stevie in here who does things that are more, uh, much more like, not strictly graded, a bit more uh, simplified, right? I mean, let me quickly go down the list. Tiger's in here. She's a pretty good artist. You can talk to her about it. We got Fetching in here. It's, uh, his name is James. Is my dad. You can talk about him. Talk to him about this. Um, just go ahead and ask questions if you can. Right? Just be, um, just be open to information. And if they have the time, just be nice. If they have the time, they'll, uh, they'll be able to help you out in whatever way they can. Otherwise, let's do the homework now. We can go ahead and talk about what you guys have done good. And what you guys have done not so good. All right. Homework time. But that's your homework. If anybody wants to do it this week's, it's eight spheres per page, two pages. Okay. Let's go ahead and go from the earliest submission, which is, I think Crazen gave me two pages. Don't look too bad. So I'm going to download this. Yeah, sorry. I think I didn't really expect anybody. To, I'm going to be completely honest. I didn't expect anybody to do the homework last week, which is why I said, yeah, just deem it to me if you do it. But now it would be, uh, I think it would be nice to, I might uh, put in a request for, because uh, I know there are so many rooms already, but like a private room for homework. Okay, this is the homework by your fellow student, Crazen. So he's in a couple of pages for us. Pretty cool, pretty not bad, right? A couple of things I want to point out uh, right off the bat. I think the edges are getting a little bit too perfect. Be a little bit careful about them, okay? So what I mean by that, you can grab any brush even an airbrush, but I want you to avoid kind of perfect edges. I went over it in the demonstration, and I think you've done it in a few areas here, but I want you to be very careful about these, crystal, these crystal clear edges, a little bit too harsh. So be a little bit careful about that. Make sure to, at least at the bare minimum, grab the value and introduce an, in an intermediate between them, just to make things look a little bit more natural, right? So just something just as simple as this can help the eye be a little bit more at rest with your uh, with your cube so again we're not trying to render like a 3d modeler here we're trying to render like an artist so be a little bit careful same thing with the edges just something as simple as this upgrades the presentation i just cut the edge off on the sides because it's not like it's not going to be a cube 
if I do this, but I want you to be considerate about the edges. Don't make them super, super perfect, right? Go over the edges. It's, it's a really important step. We didn't talk about edges with the spheres because spheres technically don't have edges, right? It's maybe near the silhouette it does, but for cubes, for sure, if you want to make your hard surface look good, please consider your edges. They're very, very important. An additional mistake I'm seeing here is maybe some of the separation can be a bit better. Some of the areas over here are getting a little bit too close for my comfort. Just a very slight modification can show you what I'm talking about. Let me go ahead and grab my selection here. Right here, right here, right here, and right here. So I can just slightly make this value a little bit darker. And you're going to see what I'm talking about, right? From there, from here to here, a bit more comfortable in our eye, a bit more natural, right? Pretty important because we care about not just contrast, but natural looking contrast. In areas like this, you have a bit too, of an, too much of an extreme bounce light. I want you to cut that back a little bit. Remember the bounce light can't compete with your main light, but in this case, I, think, I really think it is, right? Like if, if you assume that this is facing the light or it's in the light, this value is a little bit too close to this value. So cut down on the intensity of the, the bounce light. It's gonna look a lot more natural. I think your shadows look fairly pleasant, not too bad in that. You're having a logical error in the way that you construct your shadows because, for instance, you're claiming to me right over here that this side is in half tone, but if it's in half tone, it's never going to cast shadow, right? For this to cast a shadow, it must be in shadow itself, right? Nothing that's not in a shadow can, uh, can cast a shadow, okay? So it's a bit of a logical fallacy here. I want you to maybe correct that. It, it's just, it's very simple. This is just a sign of maybe a little bit too strict rule following, not as much like logic, which is it's totally fine. I myself have made the mistake before. Just bear in mind that for this to be able to cast a shadow, it must be in shadow itself. So just make sure that this value over here, this face is not a face in the light. Make sure it's a face in the shadow. Okay, so you just have two values in the shadow. One will just be a lot lighter than the other, because again, I still require it to be clear. Other than that, pretty good job. I think uh, pretty all right. This specular light, I kind of encourage you to put it on the edge. Again, this kind of goes back to you not thinking about the edge as much. Please put the specular on the edge. It doesn't make too much sense for it to be on the surface. It's possible, but on very fringe cases. So instead, migrate the specular. Maybe don't put it here. Maybe put it somewhere like here. And I showed this to you the last time in the demo. Put the specular over here. But again, we're not savages. We transition stuff. I got my airbrush, I got my eraser, and I transitioned this, this specular. And it looks kind of cool if I do so, right? That's the coolness fact. That's the realism button. Just transitioning stuff makes it look more real. And that's your healthy looking specular. Otherwise, pretty good job. Uh, you could consider varying up the cubes in terms of local value if you want to get more out of the exercise. But otherwise, not too bad. Uh, for right now, at least. This one, yeah, getting better. The contrast is pretty okay for the entire, uh, for all the cubes. Not too bad at all. Again, the edges a little bit too harsh, the specular a little bit too random, and again, the same logical issue with your shadow. Be a little bit careful about that. And maybe be a little, little bit more conservative about this contact shadow. Maybe, maybe don't be as harsh with it. You don't need that much. Maybe dial it back a little bit more. But otherwise, I think it's a pretty good submission. Not bad at all for your, uh, for your first week. So for context, creating somebody that hasn't ever painted or drawn before, so I think it's a good... Uh, benchmark for you guys that are maybe curious to try this out and you haven't drawn before you can get a lot done this is just this first week so maybe a little bit more conservative looks a bit more natural to your eye i hope you agree with me because you're not here but i think that's probably a little bit better same thing for all of these be more conservative with the occlusion don't spread it out as a contact shot after all so maybe closer to the areas of contacts is a bit better for right now otherwise not bad good job with the labeling i don't think your layout is too problematic right now so pretty good on that. That's crazy. If you're curious about how he did this, any, anybody in here, you're welcome to go ahead and message him on the Discord. Let's look at Seagull now. I like what I see. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Let's look at what you've done for me. Hopefully you're in here, but if you're not, there's always the VOD. This is Seagull's homework. Yeah, not bad at all. I'm quite happy with what I see. Let me get both pages in here. Let 
There we go. That's both pages. Wait, that's crazy again. Maybe I haven't downloaded it. One moment. There we go. I think it's all fixed. Nice. Okay. So good pages. Pretty good job. Not bad at all. I see good attention to detail. You're following the steps. You wanted to read. It's pretty good. Background, floor, shadow radiation, edges. Doing some more complex casting. I like to see that. Extra effort. It means it looks better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I am not unhappy with what I see at all. Pretty, pretty goddamn good job. Same thing for page two. Yeah. I'm not, uh, I'm not too unhappy with this. Pretty good. For some of these, I will want to point out the idea that uh, you could stand to have a little bit more gradation. This is, I'm going to be a bit of a stickler with this, just because when you're doing your more complex metallic surfaces, it's going to be important to think about this because it really does matter. So maybe just a tiny bit more gradation will make the overall presentation a bit better. Because you have to remember that if at all, if at all you don't see gradation on the surface, that's meaning that the surface is more flat than it needs to be. In this particular case, it's basically they are flat surfaces. But I think just be wary of this in the future. It might be something that's tending towards uh, getting a little bit too flat for the value. But these are quite comfortable to my eye. Not bad, not bad. Yeah, overall, good job. Really good job. I like what I see. Yeah, pretty good. Not bad at all. I don't have too many negative things to say about it. Go on with your, uh, with your spheres and your cylinders. I think it's not too bad at all. Maybe some of the edges are a little bit too harsh, but overall, like for example, the external edges, perhaps you're not taking too much consideration towards them. Be a little bit careful about these, your externals. But the way you've kind of put your little airbrush seems pretty okay. So be a bit careful about the sharper edges. But yeah, I'm happy with what I see. Good cubes. Good job. Next up, we have Belgian Dude. All right, let's look at your homework. Yeah, from what I can see already, again, um, another really good submission. Not bad at all. Good logic as well. The shadows seem pretty natural. Let's go ahead and put it on the screen here. That's one. I'm going to close these ones. Just so we don't have a, an unnecessary MacBook crash. Yeah, but good job, Pigeon. I'm quite happy with what I see there. Close Crazen. Crazen also not too bad. A bit more higher contrast. Some slight logical issues, but nothing that you can't solve within the span of a week. So just very slight adjustments. Okay, I think this was done in like one-point perspective. Um, well, two-point perspective, which is good. I like to see those ideas merge together. That's your page number one. And here is... no, we get a new window then. Here is page number two. Is that somebody else's homework? It might be. One moment. Cube homework one. This is, I think, why we should, the channel will be really important. Okay, that's your first homework, I think. Cube homework two. Okay, and here's your other one, which is this. Awesome. Okay. Found it. We're all good. Okay, let's talk about these really quickly. Uh, this page, I think, quite successful. Not bad at all. Good perspective, good construction. Some things are a little bit strange here that I want to point out to you. This specular, I think you kind of already know. You should probably gradiate that a bit better. Make it a bit, a bit more natural. Would look better for the presentation. Same thing over here. Consider, I see a, a texture brush, which I don't mind. But just be a little bit careful with this, okay? So when you're doing a specular, remember that it has to gradiate fully. It has to gradiate. So, I can make this look even better if I just do this, right? A little bit more gradual, right? Looks even better. Same thing over here. A little bit more gradual. I like that you're thinking about it, but we can upgrade this even further with the idea of making it a little bit more gradiated. Like that. It's a little bit hard to do because I don't have access to your layers, but I can still, I can still manage this fine. Just like that. Totally fine. I don't mind texture brushes too much. Can look kind of cool sometimes. But please remember to gradiate it. 
and kind of keep it towards the edge, maybe a little bit more. The eraser is your friend, so whenever you do something like this, do it on a different layer and just use your eraser tool and that'll be able to allow you to sculpt your idea. And artists all the way from beginner to advanced use this eraser just for that purpose. They add an idea, a good idea, because this is a good idea, and they sculpt it with the eraser, so don't forget that. Some attention to, attention to the uh, to the middle, not bad, not bad. This can also be gradated if you like, but I'm not going to stick to that too much. These edges can be slightly thinner if you don't want your dog your your, your boxes to look a little bit more doughy. It has slightly thinner edges, and you can also kind of cut off the edges, like I said to, to the other guy, to to craze him. If you want them to look a little bit more natural, you can always cut those edges off. Perfectly fine. The shadows are okay, not too bad. This occlusion might be a little bit too dark, control that just a slight bit, but these ones over here are actually quite natural. This one's, I think, a good one right there. This one also not too bad, pretty okay. Yeah, overall, not bad at all. Not bad at all, pretty good page. Yeah, things are well contrasted. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all, pretty good. Go to the next page here. If I can at all find it. There it is. Yeah, but that's a, that's a really successful page. I think that was your second page, right? So I'm sure you learned something. Because the first page doesn't look as good. It still looks okay. But not. Uh, I don't think I like it as much as the page we just reviewed just now. There we go. I think uh, we're getting a little bit too doughy. The, the edges over here, I think this is kind of your mistake, right? And I don't know if it's intentional. You can tell me if it is. But because you've gradiated the edges in this manner, instead of just a single stroke, we're giving the information to our viewer that this cube is not like this anymore. You're saying that it's like this. And this will make more sense since you just saw the demonstration with the spheres. Because basically you're drawing a mini sphere in the corner of your of your cube. Okay, and that's why everything over here is looking just a little bit more like a, an inflatable cube rather than a hard cube. I don't mind it though. I think it's a cool thing to explore. Uh, some of these could use a little bit more gradation, so start with a lighter value at the bottom here, just a little bit more. Same thing over here, slight perspective issues, but we won't get into that right now. Yeah, okay, not too shabby. Maybe a bit more car shadow here. Maybe don't have a like, random blues, keep the car shadow kind of clean. Like, this is a, like a decent example of a car shadow, same with this. This one has a weird kind of interference in between, keep them nice and clean. So that might be a, maybe a mishap or layer management issue. Just whatever you did here. Kind of continue to do that. I think that's successful. So the method you used over there seems to work quite well. Again, same issue. I kind of like over here, you gradiated the edge. Well done. Good job. Um, this edge on the other side, be a little bit careful about that. So make sure all the edges, especially the ones that are near the silhouette, all of those should be a little bit softer. So just touch it a little bit with an airbrush or a soft brush should be pretty good. Oh, that's not bad. Maybe a bit more gradation over here would be nice. Some of the same logical issues as before with Crazen. Kind of remember that this has to be in shadow for it to be able to cast a shadow. So all you're going to have is two individual boxes, both in shadow, except one's going to be darker than the other. Now, this might not make much sense in an illustrator's kind of point of view, but for us in concept, it is kind of really important. So it will look more like this. Where they're both kind of in shadow. Like this, maybe. And then I would make the third edge just a little bit more darker. Because again, now this looks more, it's a bit more sensible in your head now, right? Because how can it cast a shadow without it being in shadow itself? It's going to be a bit more darker here. Just for my contrast, okay? And then all I have to do is do my bond slide. Right there. And then right there. You see how that kind of looks a little bit more natural now? Because I've taken care of the logic behind the, the shadow casting. Okay? That's not, don't worry about it. It happens to everybody. It's a very common issue with uh, the first time anybody does this. But overall, pretty good job. Pretty good job. I like what I see. Pretty okay. We got Cyber Daddy, my favorite name, with a couple of pages. Are you okay? I can't say I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the saturated blue background. But it's okay. For presentation, maybe I toned that down a slight bit.
But I, I mean, I kind of get it, you know? Like, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's rough doing a bunch of boring-ass cubes all day. So you want to make it more interesting? That's fine. I've had friends like that. Friends do the same thing. It's totally okay. Just don't make it uh, kind of crazy in your face. But it's okay. I like that you're having fun with it. New document. These are two pages. Nice. Okay. I'm going to quickly just desaturate that. There you go. A lot easier for my eye. Not bad. Be a little bit careful about the shadow value. Okay. Because right now the shadow value is this. And if I halfway to black the floor, I get something like this. And for your viewing pleasure right now, I can just go ahead and replace it. And you can ask yourself what you like better. Because again, it's easy for me to say, oh, you should do this, you should do that. But it's really important for me because I'm not, I'm not some expert here, right? I'm just somebody that knows a little bit more than you do. But I'm not an expert. So I, it's important for me to just demonstrate this for you so you kind of know that uh, I'm, not, like, I'm not, not blowing smoke up your ass. So this halfway to black it. And I use this value over here. What's a good way of doing this? Hmm. Well, you can just do it like this. Doesn't matter. Let me do it slightly different way. Because again, I need to work without access to your layers. But still totally possible. I just had to put a bit more effort in. There you go. Okay. Halfway to blank the ground value. I get this. And I get this value. And now, you ask yourself, does that look more natural to me? Right? I can still add ideas of the ambient occlusion here. Totally okay, but now you gotta think, oh, does that look more natural? Do I like that? Because maybe you don't, right? Maybe you, have, you prefer the really harsh shadows. And that's okay, I don't think it's a mistake necessarily, but for natural looking lighting, if you're wondering, why does it not look natural? Why does that guy look so much more natural than me? This might be the breaking point. So again, the logic there was I picked the shadow, I picked the ground value, and I cut it in half, and that's my starting point. It seems like you just went all the way to the dark, because you're like shadow equals dark, but you don't need to, because remember, you are very, very clever with choosing the shadow value over here. So apply the same logic to choosing the value over here because this is just a shadow on a really big cube that this small cube is sitting on. So same logic kind of applies. Otherwise, pretty okay. I think a consistent issue with the shadow, but that's exactly why we do the homework because we try to catch these consistent issues. That's why I ask you to do your 16 cubes instead of one because that means I'm able to capture the patterns and thinking that you might be going astray with. But pretty okay. I think similar shadow issue there with the logic, so I ensure that both of them are in the shadow, but the edges look quite natural, similar mistake, so again, like I said, it happens to everybody, and now you guys can see it does happen to everybody, the edge over there, maybe a little bit too harsh, be a little bit careful about the darkness behind this, I think it looks okay, this is, I think, forgivable right now, some of them are a bit better than the other ones, like I think this is quite nice and natural, this is a little bit too harsh, but not too bad, not too bad, pretty good page, beyond the shadows, I think pretty not bad, okay, next page, I think it's, uh, is it this one? No, it's not. It's the other one. Go ahead and grab it. Okay, not too bad. I will kind of uh, ask you to fix your layout a little bit. So just make sure these are occupying more space on my canvas. Because you put in so much work, my man. It's, there's no sense in like not having that work be loud and proud in the main kind of setting in your piece, right? So ensure that these things occupy a slightly larger space in your canvas. I'm going to be talking about presentation more and more as we get more advanced with our lessons because you guys are going to be at my level in a matter of months, which means that you might be wanting to put your stuff online, in which case the layout is really, really important. So we won't talk about it too much, but just for now, I think it's simple. Instead of me fixing it, just to tell you, make yourself occupy more space, right? Increase the size of it. Don't just leave it there. It's part of your presentation because you see, you have put the effort into thinking about your background and your floor, but now think about the whole presentation and make everything look lovely, right? Otherwise, not too bad with the spheres, or uh, with the uh, with the cubes. Again, same dark issue there, but now you know the solution to that. Not bad, not bad. These ones look a bit, bit similar, that's okay. A little bit too similar there, but uh, yeah, overall, pretty okay. I think those are your major issues. Thanks for submitting. Pretty okay job. We have... Sal in there with a single page, not bad. Let's go ahead and look at that. Alright, not too shabby self. Pretty okay. 
maybe background just a little bit too light, kind of increasing the contrast of everything. But I think the cubes itself, the technique looks good. The edges look pretty good. Really good thought behind all of them. Pretty alright. Be careful about these blotches in the middle. It makes no sense for the shadow to just go down and then go back up. Where's this light coming from is the question to ask in your mind. Because it could be double bounce, but it's not really double bounce because of the way it's been drawn. So be a bit careful. Some of the shadows look quite pleasant. Look quite nice. Yeah, I think I'm okay with what I see. Pretty good. Decent layout as well. They could be slightly larger. But I think you did a pretty good job. I think whatever the lesson was, you've gotten a good takeaway from it. Maybe slightly more gradation would be nice. A bit more visible gradation, but quite pleasant. Yeah, good page. Good page. Not bad at all. I don't have much to say about that. Let's go ahead and look at the next one. Next one is... Oh, Between did this traditionally. Not bad. And he did it uh, digitally as well. Nice. Let's look at this pretty quickly. I think this might be one of our last pieces of homework. It's a bit of an adventure. I was supposed to end 15 minutes ago, but it's okay. We can just spend 15 less minutes of sleep. Here's one page. Is your digital one? Yeah, not too bad. Some uh, really funky things happening with uh, shadow casting and things like that, but... Uh, for example, some of the logic is a little bit strange here. Because the light's coming from the top, so I kind of expect the shadow to be more like this. So maybe reading a little bit more about shadow casting might help you a lot. So I expect to see something like this instead. For the shadow casting. Same thing over here. I think just some slight logical issues with the shadow. So I, enc I encourage you to look a little bit more into um, shadow casting. But I think the actual technique, the value, the um, the edges, that stuff is quite pleasant. I think your major issue here is just your shadow casting. Be a little bit careful about that. Uh, maybe be a little bit more careful about the ambient occlusion. Don't have it be that harsh. You can kind of get the same effect, but be a little bit more measured. So be less impactful with your ambient. Kind of keep it kind of closer to your object. Don't go super harsh with it. But otherwise, the actual technique, not too bad. Not too bad with the actual technique. Pretty okay. Yeah, not bad. I think, I think the tutorial cube is a bit better contrasted, but this is also not bad. Pretty natural. The edges, I think, could be uh, slightly better transitioned. Again, the way I do it usually is I just grab a new layer. I grab my light brush. I make my stroke. I grab my eraser with airbrush mode. And I just erase to create a nice little lovely transition. A bit more natural, right? Maybe a little bit more smaller than that. But I kind of get the idea. Although this is not a bad page. I'm not unhappy. <laughs> he said this is A3 James is the name of the, uh, the file. Fantastic. Alright. Let's uh, get this out of the way. Let's look at your traditional stuff. Really quickly. Not bad. I don't have much to say in terms of technique for traditional, because I would I think I know a good amount doing this with pencil. I'm not quite sure what the medium here is, but I'm gonna just create it the same way. So traditional submission. I think you could be a little bit more careful with your medium here. So make sure that these are a bit more contrasted. You did a pretty good job over here and over here. And even over here, these are all pretty okay. This one over here, we're losing the shape, which is why it looks less like a cube than the other ones. So be careful. Don't gradiate at the cost of clarity. Okay? But well, these ones are pretty okay. Again, some same issues with the shadow logic in both mediums. So be a little bit more careful. I would go back and really kind of figure out where the, the, you have an issue with the shadow casting. Just go step by step. Figure out where you're having a problem. But these are okay. Again, maybe a little bit more blending with the specular light over there. Let me blend that a bit better. Yeah, but not bad. Definitely getting there. Technique is okay. Values are not too bad. Pretty well contrasted. Yeah, pleasant. Pleasant. This could be a little bit more cleaner, but I think it's okay. Gouache, you said? Cool. Cool. Gouache is nice. Alright, we got the last submission by, uh, by your boy Fetching for today and then we can all wrap up and go home we have fetching in here 
All right. <laughs> uh, we have maybe some slight issues with the overall drawing. Not really a cube, but that's okay. I can understand that uh, you're a man with needs and sometimes doing all these fancy illustrations can cost you a little bit. Uh, can we get anything positive out of, out of this? I don't think so. I think you're just trolling. <laughs> uh, but Fetzig is a really good illustrator. Go check him out. If you see him on the Discord, go bother him. So if you have a cute question, definitely go DM him. He loves to answer DMs. So definitely go message Fetching Seeker on the Discord if you see him. Really cool dude. Art Center illustration. Final year student. DreamWorks uh, employee as well to a certain extent I think. And go bother him. Oh, that was a pretty good job. I think I'm quite happy with my with the cubes that I've seen, everybody kind of follows stuff pretty well. And if it's any, um, you know, positive benefit to you guys to know about, I think uh, you've probably done slightly better than my class on average. In terms of your submission, but I think uh, yeah, overall pretty pretty goddamn good. For submissions, you can DM it to me if you'd like. Um, but the next week homework, just really simple, guys. Next week I'm going to ask you to do two pages of spheres for me, and then we can have a very similar review. Uh, I did it a little bit quicker. I didn't do as much painting over as I'd like to because I'm on a time constraint. But uh, if we eventually get a room on the Discord, uh, you guys can post it there. And whenever I have time, I can review things a little bit more long form for you. Otherwise, pretty good work. I'm uh, quite happy with what I see. Uh, I'm quite uh, relieved that all the information I spotted last time was a little bit. Uh, I think I think somebody, some people got some stuff from it. And again, this is your homework, homework for next week. It's eight spheres per page. And give me two pages. Should be pretty good. Otherwise, I think we are good to go. Uh, if there are any final questions, you can ask them now. Otherwise, we can conclude today's class. But thanks, everybody, for coming. Hopefully, everything went smoothly on your end. Not too many issues with the stream. I'm going to end those capture. So, uh, on my, my Twitch, that'll go up on my YouTube. I'll post a link in the classroom announcements for anybody that missed the class. But otherwise, we're all pretty good to go. All right, thanks for coming, guys. Really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, that's, that's all we have.